And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guests are Karen Newell and Dr. Evan Alexander. Karen is an innovator in the emerging field of brainwave entrainment audio meditation, as well as a co-founder of Sacred Acoustics. And Dr. Alexander is her partner, beta tester of their meditations, and co-author with Karen on the book, Living in a Mindful Universe. Guys, thank you so much for joining me and welcome. Well, Jeff, great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Me too. I have to say right off the bat that I've been doing some of the meditations and I enjoy them and I've had some surprising results. So we'll get into that later. If you don't mind, let's just start with something simple like how did you get involved in this brainwave entrainment therapy? Well, for me, I was one of those people who thought it might be a good idea to learn how to meditate. But when I tried to do it, it just seemed impossible. My thoughts would just constantly go. And, you know, I heard that you could just focus on your breath and that all your thoughts would fade away. And it didn't quite work quite so simply. And so I I tried other methods and many other methods um, to try to get into a calmer state and sound proved to be a rather useful uh, method. And first it was things like tuning forks or crystal bowls, brass bowls, anything that kind of makes that Wah, wah, wah. And if you've heard those kind of sounds, you know they're very, very beautiful. And binaural beats are digital frequencies that are created in a similar fashion. They have that same sort of wah, wah sound, but they're created to help the brain move from a more active state of awareness, what we know as the beta state, down to a lower state of awareness, such as alpha, theta, or even delta. Delta is the state wherein we're asleep. Theta is that state when when we're in deep meditation, roughly, and uh, alpha is the state where we're in a focused state of mind, but not so relaxed. Pardon me? Or dreams. Or dreams. Alpha comes up when you're having dreams as well. But theta and delta, that border between delta and theta, that's right around four hertz. And you can, uh, you know, that's that border between awake and asleep, where our body is profoundly relaxed but our mind is still aware. And that's where this magic starts to kind of happen, where your thoughts do start to fade away. Your body becomes very relaxed, but your mind can still be actively engaged and set intention or uh, just, you know, ride the tones and let's see what unfolds. And for me, it was this kind of thing that helped me to learn how to meditate. But from there, it turned into a very useful kind of tool for, say, activating emotions that I had suppressed long ago, um, clearing the mind so that I can communicate with uh, inner guidance, uh, things like that. And so it became a very useful tool. And I don't know if you want to share how you got involved with them. Yeah, basically, after my NDE, Uh, over the next months and year or two, I realized if I was serious about wanting to understand consciousness, I had to explore my own consciousness very deeply. Uh, And so I was looking for meditative techniques and it was about two years after my coma that I learned of uh, the whole field of binaural beat brainwave entrainment. And to me, it was a very powerful concept. I mean, uh, just about every sound we've ever heard, uh, and that includes uh, chants, anthems, hymns, that might have engendered a transcendental state, those are all processed in the neocortex and recently evolved circuits that have basically come along in the last few million years, say two or three million years of evolution in primates and homo sapiens. Very different is the processing of sounds of say binaural beat brainwave entrainment. They are processed in the lower brainstem in a circuit that arose more than 300 million years ago. I think that's part of why they have such tremendous power in engendering transcendental states. And I've been working with them the last 10 years, sacred acoustics uh, in my daily life is built around an hour or two of meditation. So I find them to be extremely valuable. I was looking into binaural beats a while ago probably a year or two ago, and how they are made. And I saw a video on YouTube that was talking about most people don't make them properly, and um, they're not really getting, I guess, the proper effect from that. Do you know anything about that, and can you comment on that? Well, I can. I can't speak to how people are doing them improperly, but I do know that we create ours using digital frequencies, and 
we create them, so binaural beats are created so that you hear one frequency in one ear, a slightly different frequency in the other ear. So if we're trying to deliver a four hertz signal, we can put a hundred hertz signal in this ear, 104 hertz signal in this ear. We don't hear below 20 hertz. Our hearing can't uh, make sense of any sound below that. And so we need to get up into the higher ranges of we, what we can hear. And those carrier frequencies are what make up the binaural beats. Now, our binaural beats are created with many, many layers. So we don't just have 100 and 104. We have several different carrier frequencies. And when we create our binaural beats, we make sure that every single frequency that we include in our recordings is harmonic to other frequencies. And earlier brainwave entrainment producers or even current producers don't necessarily pay attention to that. They have other formulas for selecting their carrier frequencies. But we found when we used harmonic principles, so by that I mean we would use carriers of say 108, 216, 432. Those are the exact frequencies we use on our free download ALM recording. You can see when we add them together, 108 plus 108 is 216 and so on. That's what makes them harmonic. And this allows us to uh, avoid using the kind of background sounds to mask the sometimes harshness of digital frequencies, such as white or pink noise, different uh, types of water like rain or ocean. Many producers use those sounds to kind of help make the binaural beats easier to listen to. But uh, that's how we create ours with very complex formulas. Even the brainwave frequencies themselves are part of those harmonics. And so our audio engineer, he gets very, very specific and goes out sometimes four decimal points to make these formulas as precise as possible. And we even invested in a couple years ago, a very sophisticated tone generator, because we found that when you use the software tone generators that are out there, and maybe this is what you're speaking to, they're not always exact. And so we have to do a lot of kind of playing with those frequencies to make them precise. Having an audio engineer who is also a mechanical and electrical engineer makes him incredibly um, attentive to the mathematics and precise uh, formulas that are created. And so that's what makes ours a little bit different. But the basic of binaural beats is combining those two frequencies that are slightly different. And that's what creates that wah, wah, wah sound that seems to uh, affect the lower brainstem, as Evan said. Can you get any negative effects from listening to binaural beats? Well, it depends on what you think of as negative. And um, some people I know, uh, in, I'll, I'll start with myself. When, when I first started listening, at first I would just fall asleep. And that's not necessarily negative because many of us really do need to just get a good night's sleep. But other times it would make me feel very emotional. I would find myself crying. I would feel uncomfortable or anxious. And so when this happens to some people, they're concerned that these are negative effects of the binaural beats. But over time, I learned that what was really going on is the binaural beats were triggering emotions that were already in my system that maybe I wasn't aware of. And this gave me an opportunity to actually process those feelings and emotions. Now, some people, there are a um, low number of people who will have kind of, I would call them very sensitive to sound type of people. And sometimes they will have negative effects where they get headaches or they just can't listen for long periods without having overwhelming types of experiences that they just can't handle. And so in these cases, I, I think, well, they're either just extra sound sensitive or they've got a lot of emotional issues to process. And it may be that they need the support of a practitioner or therapist to help them work through that. And you look like you might have something to add there. Well, I was just saying that's, um, in fact, pretty much every example I can recall of someone having anything that might be interpreted superficially as a negative effect, that usually it was really just the tones were unmasking something that uh, they needed to process. And uh, so it's it's not a negative side of the tones at all. They're allowing this expression and processing and basically transformation of some of the hardships and difficulties. And that includes 
deeply uh, buried emotional trauma. But if you're not early childhood events, things like that. Yeah. But if you're not used to it or not, you know, accustomed to this sort of thing, it can take you by surprise because you're expecting, you know, this, oh, I wanted to feel the love and peace that these people are talking Mm -hmm. about. But, you know, that again, that's a smaller percentage of people. So I don't want to focus on that too much. However, I did have one guy write to me once where he said that he had been listening for a while and then he had and having really wonderful effects. And then he had this really bad trip, I'll say, where he felt like he had lost his ego and he was just lost in a sea of nothingness. And it really upset him. And I pointed out to him that this is what some long time meditators refer to as the dark night of the soul, where you actually have to face that ego and your ego needs to go through its own sort of imaginary or maybe not imaginary, its own little death or reckoning so that you can get to that part of who you truly are. And I suggested this to this listener and I never heard back from him, honestly. So I'm not sure how he processed that, but yeah, you mentioned there, sometimes things can happen very unexpectedly. And uh, for the most part, they are viewed as positive, but sometimes a little not so positive. And as Evan said, those are opportunities for transformation. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I remember seeing in the literature along with your meditations, there was like a warning or something that said, you may have a spontaneous um, emotional outburst. Well, not, maybe not outburst, but an emotional release or something. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the, the cautions. We also caution that when people listen to these recordings, they don't listen while they're driving. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you can get into an altered state and it can be a little subtle and you might not realize. And so while you're driving or performing activities, we definitely mm-hmm. have disclaimers about that. But yes, these unexpected emotions can arise. And for therapists and practitioners, this is the goal. <laughs> this is what we want to have happen. But for people doing it on our own, sometimes it's a little disconcerting and seems like it's a distraction when in fact, there's no way out but through. And going through that process gets you to the rewards that can come later. Can you talk a little bit more about each brain wave? state and the benefits of being in that state? Like what are the benefits of being in theta or in alpha? Okay. Well, in the um, sleep state, that's zero to four Hertz. And that's when you're in a coma, you will have that kind of uh, state and probably closer to zero. And when you're asleep, anywhere between zero to four Hertz, that's what's going on. Now, theta is just up from that. And again, it's that state between delta and theta that that is kind of the magic sweet spot in many cases. And this is the state we're in every single day when we're falling asleep at night or when we're first waking up in the morning. And as we're moving from Delta into Theta, the body might still be profoundly relaxed, but the mind is still aware like you are in a dream state. And yet you may not realize, for example, if you're waking up in a hotel or someone else's home as a guest, You might not realize where you are for a moment. That's that hypnagogic state. But the theta state, the pure theta state is associated with uh, uh, deep meditation, with deep creativity, with the flow state that many people talk about when you're you're performing an activity where it completely consumes you and you forget you know, what time it is, you you, maybe you're doing something you love and six hours has gone by and you haven't even realized, say, a painter or a surgeon that would happen for Eben back in the day. The alpha state, that's uh, so the theta state is four to seven hertz. And then the alpha state is eight to 12 hertz. And this is the state that we're in when we're in a calmer state of awareness, say when we're studying, when we're reading with great focus when we're very focused on an activity. Uh, So it's similar to the theta state, but not quite as deep. And then that beta state, that's roughly 12 hertz to 30 hertz. That's the state that we're in when we're walking, when we're talking, when we're active. And uh, this is the state that we really want to escape when we're talking about binaural beats into these lower states of awareness. Now above 30 Hertz, we have gamma. And now some people have called them Lambda and some other states, but roughly above 30 Hertz is gamma. And we didn't even know about gamma at first until 
the EEG devices were created in a way that we could measure that high, that gamma has been found to be associated with extra, extra profound meditation, say mediumship communications, um, you know, feeling like you're, you know, making huge breakthroughs to the other side, you might see some gamma. Gamma is found um, in people when they're having like a runner's high. So people who are performing physical activity and sort of break into this burst of, of extra wowness, I'll say that is often uh, correlates with a gamma state of awareness. I would simply add that uh, the theta state is where most pre-adolescent children spend most of their time. Theta mm -hmm. is a very common frequency in their kind of wakefulness and activity and learning modes. Uh, and the only other thing to point out about binaural beats is uh, because they're using a different uh, differential time measurement between uh, two kind of aspects of the circuit in the lower brainstem, if you get much further than about 25 hertz apart, you can't track it anymore. So you cannot drive uh, these profound brainwave states beyond about 25 hertz. But it turns out gamma might naturally emerge anyway, even from the process of just driving, say, a lot of delta and theta uh, in a deep meditative state. Uh, the gamma can emerge from that naturally, organically, and not, not being driven as a, as a direct binaural. And there are people actually speaking of gamma who make gamma recordings. And honestly, straight, strict gamma recordings can sometimes make people feel a little funny. Some people love them and some people feel a little off. I know I'm one of those people, but we created light body, which does include gamma frequencies, but it is also embedded with delta, theta, and alpha frequencies that come and go throughout. So something about anchoring in those lower states and then introducing the gamma seems to make a difference. So there's a lot of different ways to combine these. And many of our recordings don't just include theta. They might include a mix. Or we might start with some, some uh, delta to get you into that relaxed state. But then just to keep you from falling completely asleep, introduce some theta and alpha to bring that higher awareness, but not too aware up in the beta state. We end many of our recordings, not all, but many of them with those beta frequencies that come out sounding very high pitched and kind of annoying uh, when you're coming out of a deep state, but they help to get the brain back to that awake and alert state before you go off and perform other ac activities. I generally don't say much about myself and my podcast, but I used to wear a hat from time to time of being a music producer and a little bit of audio engineering, and I produced somebody's um, CDs a long time ago. So some of it, when I'm listening to your meditations, I'm I'm kind of also thinking about, you know, I have to, I want to be in the meditative state, but it comes to mind, like, what's going on in the music? So I've noticed it's like in the beginning of at least your Delta, Beta, um, Alpha series, the one that I have that, it always appears to be that it starts with a certain droning sound. And then you kind of, I feel at a certain point, it finally goes into like whatever state it, you want it, the person to be in because it'll change into like a certain type of another, you know, droning and a completely different sound. And it'll stay there for about 15 minutes. And then it'll kind of come back into that other droning sound again, kind of from the beginning. So to continue on what you're saying, are you kind of like initially putting maybe somebody in beta or something or like a, a low beta or a high beta, and then you finally get to whatever state you want them in, and then you bring them back out to this other binaural beat? Yes. And that's why we call them sound journeys, because not all, but many of them take you through that kind of process. And basically, we typically start with delta, the, mm. the most relaxed state to sort of just bam, get you into that relaxed state from your walking around. We don't take you down there gradually. We just go right there. And in fact, there's addiction doctors who find that incredibly useful. Our free ohm recording is used at least by two different doctors that we are aware of, where when their patients come in and they're kind of these addiction patients are strung out and can't relax, they, they put headphones on them with this ohm recording for just one minute. And suddenly they're able to find this much calmer state. And so it really is uh, really pushing people down to that most relaxed state right from the start. And sometimes we'll add further Delta to keep you going even deeper. But again, usually we'll start to add 
a little theta or alpha, depending on what the purpose is, um, they're all slightly different. The recordings you're talking about are our 20 minute recordings that come as a collection, both in the whole mind bundle and whole states. So it's six different um, recordings, 20 minute recordings that can be used for a daily practice. And you describe them well, yes, they start out I think they all start out in, in a, with Delta and then switch to the uh, Theta Alpha or Delta in that case. But yeah, the, the background sounds will also switch up too, just to kind of keep it. Some of our recordings are very constant throughout and those are meant to be listened to say while painting or studying or doing activities where you want to have some extra focus, but others really are these sound journeys. And those are Eben's favorite. Yeah, those... <laughs> I absolutely adore the sound journeys. And I will, in fact, the, the app allows you to kind of do a playlist where you organize the, several in a app, the Apple version of the app Apple for version iPhone of the and app, iPad. Right. Yeah, you can do playlists. And I, and I use that quite liberally. Uh, I have certain combinations of these tones like Heart Center 2 moving into Golden Light, moving into Light Body. I mean, these are uh, incredible when you kind of string them together. It can lead to a very deep and profound uh, uh, transcendental journey. When you first mentioned your free download, I kind of smiled because the very first time I listened to it, you know, you start out with the kind of droning sound and then all of a sudden comes the ohm. And I wasn't expecting that. It was like out of nowhere, the ohm came in and I, it kind of like startled me at first. I was like, whoa, where did that come from? But then, you know, you get used to it. And then I noticed during that, at some point, you bring in the heartbeat. Why do you bring that in? Well, we wanted to bring in the heartbeat. The, the, so the ohm recording comes from the free 20-minute download you're talking about uh, that anyone can get by going to sacredacoustics.com. Look for the free download. Enter your email. We'll send it to you. You can keep it forever. It's yours to keep. Um, that comes from our foundation series, the first of our recordings in the foundation series. And we wanted the heartbeat as the beginning, sort of as the beginning to bring people into that deep awareness of their bodies. And, you know, this is about uh, moving away from the sensation of the physical body, but you first need to be grounded in the body to really reach that point. And the heartbeat just seems to be this sound that you might hear in the womb, right? Where you just feel like you're you're in the body, but you're not aware of the external world. So it was just a, a, a listening cue to sort of make you realize that you were in this very deep, deep state. And interestingly, when we selected the speed of that heartbeat, um, the average resting heartbeat of a, a woman is 60, 60 beats per second minute minute and for a man it's about 50 uh, a resting heartbeat but when we listened to it in that relaxed state it sounded so fast it sounded yeah. like we were doing you know running races or something so we slowed it way down i think it's somewhere around 40 hertz of that heartbeat so it's an exaggerated slowness but you speak of that ohm and i wanted to talk about that for a moment the sound of ohm is part of it but the the key that we absolutely recommend is that people become accustomed to also vocalizing that ohm sound. And it doesn't have to match the pitch of what you're hearing. It doesn't even have to be an ohm. It can be an ah or an ooh. In fact, we advise people to experiment with different pitches, with different um, vowel sounds to make and see where you might feel different vibrations in your body. Because when you make that ohm sound, you're actually creating vibrations of your own system. And when you do that, somehow that vibrational part of you seems to interact with the vibrations of the sound. And so that ohm is very, very intentional. And I know that some people get a little spooked by it. They'll say, oh, it sounds spooky. And as you say, most people become accustomed to it. Others, the first time they listen to it, they'll say, say things like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm home. Hmm. This is where, I, you know, this is what I'm familiar with. So people are either incredibly familiar with this sound or, you know, it takes a little getting accustomed to. But actually vocalizing it yourself makes a big difference. And this ohm sound was highly uh, critical to Eben's near-death experience because this was the sound he heard in the deepest part of his experience, so much so that he called that deity that he sensed Om instead of God. Yeah, I think that's that's an important point. Is from my journey, 
that alm was a very natural resonance that to me identified with that kind of unity of consciousness and the very source of our conscious awareness as being that infinitely loving and healing God force that so many have encountered in an NDE. But I also like to reiterate Karen's beautiful point because I take advantage of this every day. That is actually uh, verbalizing that alm, chanting along with the alm at least three or four times at the beginning of a meditation. And what it does for me is it ties everything together. It ties kind of my mental process, my breathing, my body and the physical here and now with what I'm hearing in the headphones, it's influencing my lower brainstem. And every bit of that gets kind of wrapped together into this beautiful one resonant uh, kind of alming process. And uh, uh, I find that it, it enhances the meditation a lot to actually do that little step at the very beginning, just to ohm along three or four times uh, mm. with those ohms. It connects everything, uh, physical, mental, spiritual, across the veils and allows for a unified experience. And some people use chanting alone to get into these altered states of awareness. There's tons of, you know, thousands of years of different things that can be chanted most most obviously through the Hindu tradition. They have many, many different kirtan chants and ways to vocalize certain energies to bring certain experience. So we're just really touching the, the bare minimum surface of the benefits of that kind of vocalization of the Aum sound. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've never practiced transcendental meditation or TM, but I think that they chant certain mantras over and over to kind of get them into that state. Yeah. Mm. Different mantras are, are also recommended if you're having trouble with uh, maintaining that focus. It really is just a way to keep your mind focused. It's a training method to keep your mind focused on a certain sound. And so the mantra that is in almost all of our recordings, those that include verbal guidance would be let go. That's mm. just one option. But if someone has done transcendental meditation already has a mantra they're accustomed to, we do recommend that people combine their uh, current techniques while listening to the recordings. And many TM teachers might suggest that listening to the sound while doing transcendental meditation isn't really transcendental meditation. And I'll, I'll give you that. I, you know, that, that may be the case that silence is required for true transcendental meditation. But many people, when they combine the techniques, find that they can go even deeper than they have before and really enrich those experiences in a different way. And some people I know will listen to our recordings to get into the relaxed state and then do their uh, transcendental meditation or other types of meditation involving different breathing techniques. There's so many of them out there. So listening either before or during can be, uh, I just suggest that people use trial and error and experiment with different combinations of techniques because we're all so unique. We're all going to find kind of a different combination that works best for us. One thing that I noticed at the end of your free download was that the recording of the ocean or the waves was incredible. That was probably the most realistic recording I've ever heard of that. Well, it was a realistic recording. And I believe <laughs> that that recording was done at Montauk yeah, Beach. Off the north end of Long Island. Yeah. And uh, with binaural, uh, a binaural re recorder. Um, yeah. yeah, microphone, so that you're actually getting, that was not done uh, digitally. That is actual natural ocean sound. So if you like that, we have other ocean sound that only comes at the end of all of those foundation series recordings. And I think you're right. It's a beautiful way to kind of relax and yet get grounded at the same time back in the here and now. But we include those ocean sounds on our lunar cycles mm -hmm. recordings because those are related to the moon. And of course, the ocean waves are integrally Sometimes. tied to the moon. And then we, our latest release is actually called Water. And that is because we had so much demand from customers who love that segment of water at the end of Alm and the other foundation series recordings that we created an entire recording with, with uh, only water. And it includes some rain and trickly sounds, but lots and lots of ocean. And these, uh, we also had uh, the Oregon coast, um, beautiful Oregon coast. That's where I grew up. I love it. Our audio engineer was able to record there for the water recording. So yes, any of your listeners who love water, that water recording will satisfy your urge for sure. Dr. Alexander and I come from a world where we like 
treatment regimens, treatment protocols. So, for example, what do you recommend for something like anxiety? That's a perfect question because we actually did a pilot study uh, measuring anxiety. This was done by Dr. Anna Yusum, a psychiatrist in New York City. And within her practice, she basically prescribed recordings to her patients and then measured their levels of anxiety using the state trait anxiety inventory, which is used in all kinds of uh, psychiatric studies. And so it's a very well-honed form to be using. And the results of her study were actually published in the Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease in February of 2020. And remarkably, they showed a 26% reduction in anxiety after two weeks of listening using certain protocols, which I'll share. But she had a control group. Those were people who managed to fill out the state trade anxiety inventory, but did not incorporate listening to the recordings in their daily routine. And they experienced over the same length of time, a 7% reduction in anxiety. So that's a difference between about 19%, 26% reduction in anxiety is actually a remarkable uh, effect as compared to medication and other types of ways to treat anxiety. And so when you, when you ask about a treatment protocol, the listening protocols that were provided was actually that whole mind bundle that you spoke of, which is available on our website. And it comes with a PDF that include these listening protocols and other information for listening. But basically we recommend that people listen at least one session of 20 minutes a day and that's why we offer those 20 minute recordings. But then we give listeners the flexibility to listen to the hour long versions that don't have any variation. So they can be listened to for any length of time. We recommend that people listen to those while performing other activities, whether it's taking a nap, whether it's studying, whether it's just relaxing without necessarily, um, you know, meditating and focusing on your breath, but more a contemplative state. And so people who, you know, incorporated these, we made it very flexible so that people could work it into their own schedule. So it doesn't matter what time of day you listen. We absolutely recommend you listen with headphones. This is how you'll get the greatest benefit of those binaural tones when you have a true stereo effect. And so many of us now are used to listening on our iPhones or through one speaker Bluetooth systems, and you, you'll get some effect because we also include, I forgot to mention earlier, monaural beats in combination with the binaural beats, which make a one speaker system delivering these, these uh, frequencies a little bit, but much more powerful using headphones. And so it really is that simple to just uh, download these recordings. And just so people know, when the pandemic began, way back when it began, uh, we made these recordings available at no cost. We, we lowered the price significantly to $19. And anyone who can't afford even that, we offer a free option so that there is no barrier. Uh, probably people with financial difficulties are ones who have more anxiety. And we really do need to see a reduction of anxiety in this world. I'm glad you mentioned that because as Eben will tell us, and I'm sure he shared with you in a previous interview, we're all connected. And so anyone who takes the time to reduce their anxiety using any method has my personal gratitude because as you're reducing your anxiety, you're helping all of us. And so all of us can not only help ourselves, but help others by doing this. And just by setting up your own routine in a, in a somewhat flexible fashion, you can contribute to uh, helping the entire consciousness that we're all a part of find that inner peace. I would say the profound effects I had listening to that bundle was the first time that I listened to the Theta, after I finished, I just had this unusual sense that my mind was clear. And nice. Then, yeah, and then, this, and then um, when listening to the Beta during the binaural beat section in the middle, I just felt like the combination of the beats and it seemed like he kind of panned them left and right or something. It was kind of like swirling. It almost felt like it was massaging my brain. Oh, that's nice. Now you said you were listening to beta. We don't have a beta recording. Maybe that's not beta. It must have been um, alpha. 
alpha no, yeah. yeah yeah we get all kinds of responses it's interesting that you have uh you know an audio engineer background because musicians when they listen to these recordings they can't really help themselves to you know analyze uh, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on. And uh, certain musicians like drummers, for example, are trying to figure out where do I put my beat, you know, mm -hmm. and they can't help it because that's what you're trained in. But yeah, the it's fine to sort of listen to the tones and figure it all out. But the real benefit is to just allow that to fade into the background and just observe how your energy shifts. And of course, it's, it's fine to analyze what's going on there, but that can keep you sort of in your neocortex, as Evan would say, rather than really escaping all of that analytical thought. But, you know, you can't do this wrong. And the good news is you you know, repeat, repeat, repeat. Every session is different. And one session you might be analyzing and in another, you might completely forget that the tones are taking place as you're kind of, I love how you said it's massaging your brain. Lots of people will make that note as well. But uh, at some point when you're in a very deep state, you forget you even have a brain, mm -hmm. at least part of you will, because um, these recordings can also help you to uh, have an out-of-body experience, for example, where your awareness is removed from the physical body, not completely, and not like death, you can return to the body, but lots of people, that's their goal. And they need a way to sort of, uh, you know, get their brain out of the here and now, get that mind activity to move beyond the here and now. So anyway, just a few comments on that, but thank you for sharing your experience. I expect with, uh, I expect with further listening, your experiences will continue to evolve. And we often, as part of our listening protocols, recommend that people set intentions for whatever it is that they want to accomplish. So if it's reduced anxiety, the intention would be to generate what would it feel like if I had a feeling of peace? you know, the opposite of anxiety or acceptance or allowing, whatever that may be, we recommend that people generate the thought of that intention, but also the feeling of what it would be like if I had already accomplished my intention. And then just let that intention go. There's no reason to focus on it throughout the entire listening session, but just set it in motion at the beginning of listening and then just uh, let it unfold and see where it takes you. And also it's a good exercise in learning that we are not that voice in our heads. You know, so many people identify with that little ego mind, that running stream of thoughts in their head is who they are. But what you can find in meditation is that that little voice, uh, uh, I love how Michael Singer calls it the annoying roommate uh, in his book, The Untethered Soul, because that's what that little voice is. And so for me, meditation is always about letting that little voice state an intention, make a request, but then it goes into timeout because there's far greater wisdom than just our little linguistic bro uh, brain trying to follow the breadcrumbs and logic and rational thought. The universe can give us much greater kind of intuitions and insights into the nature of reality if we open up to it and are able to quiet that little uh, monkey mind voice in our head. Dr. Alexander, has any of these recordings brought you into a state that has simulated or been very similar to your NDE? And if so, which recording is it? Well, what I can say is, yes, I have uh, encountered some pretty profound uh, kind of revisitations of my NDE. The one thing I must confess is I have not yet uh, duplicated at any time that full-blown ultra-reality, that kind of sense that I had deep in coma of uh, become, you know, knowledge through identification with huge swathes of the universe. Uh, that but kind you of, have some of that. I certainly That's have a lot of intense. that and, and also developed a uh, very... Uh, robust working relationships. Uh, that's something I discuss a bit in our book, Living in a Mindful Universe, specifically about my adoptive father. You know, if I had scripted my NDE, he passed over four years before the NDE. If I had scripted it, he would have been there front and center, and yet he was nowhere to be found. I explain all that in our third book, Living in a Mindful Universe, in a meditative encounter I had with my father more than two years post-coma involving uh, these tones. And uh, really, there's so many of them that I love that I've found occasionally to be of benefit um, of the sacred acoustics tones. The ones I would recommend in this moment are things like Heart Center 2, um, Light Body, Golden Light, uh, the Lunar Cycles, I find very good, Low Band Pi, very powerful. 
Um, and then know yourself in terms of journeying. Uh, I mean, he doesn't just have one favorite. Them. I don't have one favorite, <laughs> and, and it's good that they have such a rich repertoire uh, at Sacred Acoustics. I mean, an extraordinary kind of library of abilities. I would say, too, we've played Primordial Mind at events, and uh, people have told us that they return to that feeling they had of their near-death experience in uh, Primordial Mind, but it's not one size fits all. Uh, wow. But I would say that you can kind of cultivate these connections. I know I have over time um, that Evan has had, but it'll be right. different. It'll be a little different for each person. And Love Body is another amazing recording. So just the whole repertoire, just run with it, play with it. I mean, the ultimate bundle is the best way to go if you really want to just dive in. But uh, Karen won't say that. It's too salesy. But uh, <laughs> I can tell you, we have people who love this stuff and, and sooner or later they realize they want all of it. So that's yeah, the best pathway forward for them. Huge so discount. So there's not one specific title that will say, hey, use this certain one to get an OBE. No, it's Correct. Really, really although, although if you're asking about OBE, the one that is most commonly uh, referred to in OBEs is light body. And I would say that I feel as though it's related to the verbal guidance that's included because part of having an out-of-body experience is not just... I mean, sometimes they can happen spontaneously, but anyone who's tried to cultivate them will tell you that if you have an expectation of having one, an excitement about it, that that can really get in your way. And so while the binaural beats can help you lower those expectations and find that, uh, that, that kind of foundational state to spring off from, it's your mental capacities that really helped you to have an out-of-body experience. And the guidance in light body asks you to imagine that your, your energy basically is moving all the way out the top into infinity and then all the way out to the bottom. And then you're spinning a cylinder around your body and all of this. And so those mental kind of techniques in combination with binaural beats are really what helps people to have an out-of-body experience. So Are all of your meditations come in versions of music only or music and guided? Well, it, we have a good amount of recordings that include verbal guidance. And that is because, simply because you do need to engage your mind. And so verbal guidance, especially for beginners, can be very useful. But at some point, those words kind of get in the way and you find yourself ignoring them or you know, they're just, they're just getting, uh, you know, they're distracting you. And so we do offer any recording that it contains verbal guidance by default, you will also receive a nonverbal recording of the same music that has no words on it at all. We also create some recordings that have no verbal guidance. The water recording has no verbal guidance, one called cosmic womb, low band pie trance, mm -hmm. none of those include verbal guidance um, because they're just meant to listen to uh, as sort of ambient sound without any intention. We have one recording called Divine Love, which is uh, very heavily guided, a yoga nidra uh, meditation. That does not include a version without words, uh, just because yoga nidra is a verbally words. guided practice. And so without the words, it, it really doesn't accomplish that. And that was the agreement we made with our partner who helped us to create that recording. So yes, there's lots and lots of variety for people who like verbal guidance and people who don't. There are people who say, I hate verbal guidance, don't want to hear it. For those people, I do recommend just at least once listening to the version with verbal guidance, just so you kind of understand what those sound effects were kind of meant to be accompanying. You know, we would write the scripts and then create the sound effects that go with them. So that can be very useful. And those who really do like their verbal guidance, I encourage those to listen to the versions without verbal guidance and see if you can't set your own intention, either recalling the original verbal guidance or creating your own. Uh, so there's lots and lots of flexibility. And remember that one of the issues here is you don't want to necessarily engage that linguistic brain, that ego mind. 
And whenever you put words in there, you're drawing people back into their dominant hemisphere, linguistic brain, brain, body, material world, where that's actually what we're trying to move away from to get a much broader connection to that primordial consciousness. And that's where uh, over time, uh, for most of these, I don't, as much as I love Karen's voice, uh, I've turned off the verbal guidance. It just um, memorized. So <laughs> yeah, I've pretty much memorized uh, all the pathways. So, but it is important. I think the first time you listen to one, any of these, uh, if it has verbal guidance to listen to that at least once. So you get the idea of what is kind of behind the tones. And you'll find that that verbal instruction is actually very helpful at aligning your journey with what the tones are best at accomplishing. You may have already said this, but I just want to ask again, what do you recommend for beginners? Beginners, I recommend that free 20-minute ohm recording for sure, and this whole mind bundle. Uh, the one that you record that you downloaded and also that was used in that pilot study. It gives you a really good idea of how your brain responds to the delta, alpha, and theta frequencies and can help you determine from there where you might want to start. And you know, other ways to start for beginners are with cosmic womb or water, where you just can hear this ambient sound in the background without necessarily having to, you know, do anything else. And those are all very good places to start for beginners. What are some of the other conditions that you can use these meditations for that it can improve them besides anxiety? Well, really, the sky's the limit. I hate to sound like a snake oil salesman, but people use these for all kinds of reasons. We have one man who was listening to recordings all day long at very low volume in his earbuds. And that helped with his neuropathy, the sort of chronic pain that he had helped him to kind of move his awareness away from the pain. I'm not sure everyone would do well listening all day long at a low volume, but he experimented and found that worked for him. We had a woman in, um, in the Netherlands who's blind and she would get very anxious walking out in the world because she used to cane very efficiently to walk around. But she would often run into things like signs or tree branches that were at a, you know, lower that her cane did not pick up. And she found that listening, it was, I think, to low band pie trance while walking on a treadmill. She would imagine herself walking out in the world. And when that anxiety would come up, as it inevitably would, she would, you know, go back into this feeling of, of the low band pie trance. And over time, this definitely reduced her uh, fear of walking out in the world. But people use them to help with sleep. People help them to with for focus. People use them to communicate with the souls of departed loved ones. That's a very common creativity. kind of feature. Yes, to creativity. enhance creativity, innovation. Um, sometimes we just need that little get out of our head kind of, uh, you know, stress to solve problems. People use them, listen at night to enhance their dream state. Uh, some people use them to act, actually ask questions of, of uh, problems they're trying to solve, where you just sort of, that's your intention. You ask a question at the beginning and then sit back and wait for the answer. The answer may not come during the meditation, but this is not just a, you know, oh, do the meditation and go. You're actually shifting your consciousness so that when you are out dealing with worldly events, you can feel a little different. People find themselves feeling calmer, clearer, as you said, that your thoughts were just clearer. Uh, many, many effects can happen uh, using intention or not. Or add in, you know, power of prayer, healing, healing self, healing others, loved ones what have you. I mean, there's a tremendous repertoire. And in fact, on Karen's uh, website, sacredacoustics.com, she has a I want to dot 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 page where all these kind of things are laid out and then specific pathways of sacred acoustics tones uh, that might be useful are listed. So for, for just different, explore the website. Yeah, for different personal goals. So lots of options. Karen, can you tell us about some of the results or some of the experiences you personally have had from using these meditations? Oh, yes. Well, I early on, I was I mentioned in the beginning of the interview about triggering emotional uh, suppressed emotions that I didn't even realize I had. I was able to sort of trigger these emotions and actually process them um, over time. And this helped me to then 
you deal with my emotions better in the world. So reactive emotions are much, much less common for me, as mm-hmm. Eben can attest to. Absolutely. I can stay calm and balanced in almost any situation, not any situation. Um, I have used them to communicate with inner guidance. I've used them to feel more aligned with my higher purpose. Um, The more that I can move beyond the here and now of who I am and access that greater, more expanded part, the more I really feel as though I'm living my purpose here on earth. And so they've really enriched my life in so many ways. And I will confess, I am no longer a daily listener, um, although I do listen sometimes. Evan is a daily listener. I have found the the space where I don't, it, it doesn't, it's not as beneficial as it used to be. And some of us will find that to be the case, that they are useful for a time. And then you reach a, a, a place where you don't really feel like they're benefiting you as much as before. And, and that's, we're all going to move through this a little differently. And some will listen for much, much longer than others. But I listened for many years on a very regular basis. And uh, it, it brought me to places that I probably would never have been able to get to using um, just meditation techniques alone without the sound. And I tried many, 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 many techniques out there from Qigong to healing touch for animals, uh, you know, self-hypnosis, remote viewing, all of this. And binaural beats have turned out to be a wonderful foundation for all of it. So even remote viewing, the practice of remote viewing, where it's really just intuitive practice, listening to the binaural beats while performing those activities is much more successful. So um, yeah, I have lots and lots of specific experiences, but uh, they've all led me to just becoming more of who I truly am and not just the, you know, woman who has a job and is a mother and, you know, but, but much, much more. All right. Well, before we finish up here, do you have any new recordings that you're working on or is there anything else new within sacred acoustics that's going on that you'd like us to know about? Well, the newest recording we, we released in uh, September of this year of uh, 2021, in case this is evergreen, uh, th- that's water. And that was a big accomplishment for us. And our audio engineer has some, some ideas in the hopper, nothing that is coming close to being complete, but we're working on things like uh, the things that our listeners ask for. And one of those is um, to get more energy. What would I listen to to get more energy, focused energy, say for working out? And so that's one of the things we're working on. And over time, they will evolve out of our audio engineers production mode. And uh, But we're also looking for active ways to perform pilot studies, say in hospice centers, in prisons, in uh, school, school settings, um, We have done the psychiatric practice. We've talked to a few hospice centers, but we are hoping to do a little more research in those areas so more and more people can realize the practical benefits of these recordings. Have you tried running an EEG while a person's listening to your meditations and seeing how their brain responds? Yes, we have. We have some EEG devices. First, we started with a a three probe, so we were getting the left and right of frontal lobes. And and then we moved on to a 20 probe EEG device where we get more all over the head. And yes, what we find is, I'll I'll tell you briefly that uh, Hemisync was one of the original, or if not the original binaural beat uh, producers. And sync, that word sync has shown up in many, many different binaural beat producer names and synchronize is really the key here. And what they used to tell you is that the left and right brains were actually synchronizing while listening to binaural beats. And what we found is that's not the case at all. Um, Not necessarily. It depends on. We saw it pretty rarely, uh, the synchronization, but what we always saw was that the brain would get into a much, much quieter state almost immediately. And very often the uh, left brain might be more quiet than the right brain, which kind of makes sense because the left brain is more analytical, whereas the right brain is more creative. So yes, all of those studies we did on ourselves and found uh, that they absolutely are moving the brain into a quieter state of awareness rather quickly. How can people 
follow what you guys are up to, you know, besides sacred acoustics? I would just say uh, ebonalexander.com is a great resource. The, the reading list uh, and blog postings, I think, are, are very valuable. Many interviews are listed there. Also, of course, sacredacoustics.com. And then, um, very importantly, Karen came up with this brilliant idea during the early pandemic. Since all of our uh, jobs were canceled, why not invite the colleagues that we would have been presenting with to interview? And so, if you go to unitedinhopeandhealing.com, Oh, you can, it's all free. You can go back through all those interviews of people we've done over the last uh, basically two years. Uh, and they're mainly of scientists investigating consciousness, experiencers, et cetera. But it's, I think, a very valuable and easy way for people to get into a lot of this revolution uh, in the un- 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 unification of science and spirituality. And it also includes a 20 minute recording, a sacred acoustics recording for free based on heart center that's actually called the United Souls of Earth. And this was a meditation that we did at the end to conclude all of our interviews where we all just connected with each other spiritually through that binding force of love since we couldn't be with each other physically. All right. During the interview today, you mentioned that you were running a special or something on that bundle. Can you tell us again once more about that? Yes. If you go to sacredacoustics.com, look for the whole mind bundle. It will be, you will have the option of CD format for $29, and we can ship those to you, MP3 format for $19, and absolutely free for anyone. You can just choose the free option if you really just don't have any funds, and we can make that available to you. It includes nine different recordings and a PDF guide with useful listening protocols. That's great. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. I really appreciate you, and I wish you the best. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Great being here. And yes, we appreciate you too. Thank you for what you do. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. too. Thanks. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.